dolls welcome back to the doll house if you are new here thank you so much for stopping by i am jay chantel and i create content about my bbl journey with dr calvin jung as well as beauty and lifestyle vlogs all right dolls last week video was pretty heavy all right <laughs> i understand so i wanted to go ahead and make a video that you can get you a little bit more excited about surgery especially if you are kind of on the fence because you're like i want to have surgery especially with dr jung but he is just too expensive and his price is bigger than my pockets i totally understand i have definitely been in your shoes as well i want to give you guys some realistic tips on paying for surgery and also giving you some information about how to finance surgery and i want to give you a couple risky ways that you can also pay for surgery if you know <laughs> you really want to well if you stick to the end of this video i'll be giving you guys some bonus tips on how to make some extra income as you are saving for surgery and preparing for surgery when it comes to taking out loans for surgery i know that a lot of people turn their nose up to about that I don't personally don't because I feel like first of all who cares like if you it's your money it's your body if you want to take out loans to pay for surgery then so be it my biggest concern is just that you want to make sure that you have the money to pay that money back because you don't want to put yourself in a bind outside of that like girl get your surgery girl like take out that loan do what you need to do get it done people take out loans all the time people take out forty fifty thousand dollar loans for a wedding so with that said go get your surgery first things first when i'm talking about paying for surgery i'm not only talking about actually having your procedure performed by your surgeon of choice i am talking about everything i'm talking about supplies flights recovery home hotel food post-op massages and then the biggest thing that we often overlook is leaving room for error slash complications <laughs> If you're like me, you are probably having surgery outside of where you live. I live in Los Angeles and I had surgery in Houston. You definitely want to factor in if you have to extend your trip a little bit longer as well as if you have to fly back into town in order to, you, I don't know, get a seroma drained, get some other complication or situation looked over by the surgeon. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into the first way that you can pay for surgery. That is an in-house payment plan. Now, the pro of an in-house payment plan is that you don't have to apply for a third party credit card company in order to have a payment plan for your surgery. The cons of this is that not many surgeons are actually taking advantage of this opportunity anymore only because there are other medical loans slash medical credit cards that you can take out that are of no liability to them. So they get their money up front and then you have to just take care of that um, on your own with another credit card company. But it's always nice to ask if your office, your, if your surgeon's office offers an in-house payment plan. Now the second one and the most popular that I have been hearing about is care credit. use care credit when I was in college to have braces and it was a pretty easy uh, process the pros of care credit is that it allows you to have surgery with little to no upfront costs and you can make payments later the reason why I'm saying you can have surgery with little to no upfront costs is there's no guarantee on how much you'll actually get approved for it. when I was doing my research on how much dolls have been approved for in the past I have seen things as low as 800 and I've seen numbers as high as 17,000 so that's a lot of room in between I know that the determining factors when it comes to care credit is credit score as well as income I think that they're both equally weighted but if I really believe that your income is really going to determine how much they're able to give you because that's going to give them an idea of how much you can actually pay back 
So when it comes to credit scores, I have heard that you are able to apply even if you have as low as a 600 credit score. But of course, the higher the credit score, the better. Now, another pro of Care Credit is that you have 0% interest if you pay within a specific time frame. That time frame is going to depend on the agreement that you sign up for. Now, the con of Care Credit is that if you do not pay that amount back within 6 to 12 months, you will be charged what is called retroactive interest. So pretty much they go all the way back to the beginning of time <laughs> and they charge you for all of the interest that you were not able to pay. And I believe that that interest rate is a lot higher than if you would have signed up for the fixed monthly payments and the reduced entry, the reduced interest rate. Another con of care credit is that you can only use care credit for medical purposes such as the surgery or the um, medication that you have to get after surgery. So you can't use care credit for things like traveling, you can't use it for post-op massages, you can't use it for lodging or anything like that. It has to be for medical purposes. Um, the good thing about care credit that I like is that you can try to get pre-approved and it doesn't hurt your credit score it's a soft inquiry all you need is your name address date of birth social security your net income and then other housing information now i have heard dolls say that they have increased <laughs> their income in order to get approved now you know i'm all for a good scam i'm just kidding <laughs> I just gotta be careful with that. You don't want to tell Care Credit that you're able to pay back fourteen thousand dollars in twenty four months when you know you're unemployed. Like you want to be very careful because you don't want to hurt your your credit in the process of trying to you know have surgery and things of that sort. So be honest and just you know see what it is and um, just be wise about what you do when you apply is that care credit does offer payment protection so pretty much what that is they charge a small fee to each monthly installment and it pretty much gives you insurance so that if you ever lost your job if you ever had covid and you couldn't work or something like that due to like medical issues they wipe out your entire balance wait a minute now, I don't have a whole lot of details about that. I actually had a doll tell me that she had did that. That's how she paid for her surgery. And then she lost her job due to COVID and she ended up getting her whole entire violence wiped off. That's like amazing. <laughs> I don't have a lot of information about it, but you can look into it because that is something that they offer. I wanna go ahead and go into the next thing, which is a bank loan. have a long-standing relationship with your bank you can apply for a bank loan the beauty in a bank loan is that you can use it for things outside of medical purposes so you can use it to pay for your surgery but you could also use it for um, you could also use it for massages lodging traveling and other expenses when you have a bank loan it goes directly to your checking account and you are able to charge it as you would charge a regular debit card. that the apr rate slash the interest rates are going to vary based on like your credit credit history income and of course the bank institution that you're going with i don't have any specifics around that but i encourage you to do your research because bank loans are a good option okay so now that i've talked about the two ways that you can pay well the three ways that you can pay for surgery and more of a payment plan situation i do want to kind of touch on a cash option because i know some of you guys are big bank rolling and your money real long and you can pay cash so um for those of you who want to pay cash who do not want to take out any credit whatsoever you do have an option of of course saving now i know that it's hard to save money Number one, it's just hard to save money. And number two, it's really difficult when you have these impulses. When you find a surgeon that is like snatching those bodies, like you want to go ahead and get surgery right now. <laughs> and that's exactly how I was <laughs> when I first saw Dr. Jung's results. So I completely understand what that feels like. You do have the option to save 
for your surgery. You have two ways that you can do it. Number one, to have surgery sooner, you can set aside large amounts of cash in order to meet a certain goal. Now, it depends on how long your money is, right? Because it's like if you working at Burger King and you know you get paid here in California, what is it? Maybe $15.25, I think that's minimum wage. $15.25 per hour um, and you know you only can set aside maybe two to three hundred dollars per paycheck because rent is crazy high here then you know you might want to go with the next option i'm gonna talk about because you don't want to be homeless trying to save for surgery sis you know so you got to be very wise about that now if your money is longer you know you might be able to save a good thousand dollars from each check a month you know to put to the side and you can go ahead and plan for your surgery a lot sooner. Option two is setting your surgery day way back, maybe like in 2023, um, and just coming up with a realistic savings plan that works for your budget and being serious about your savings plan, like having a whole nother account for your surgery money. You can have a little surgery fund where you just put money there, you don't touch it, you don't even have no credit card, no debit card attached to that account. It's strictly for saving for surgery. So you also have that that um, that option as well. Of course, there are a lot of perks on paying for things cash. Uh, of course, if you pay for things cash, you don't owe nobody nothing. You can go ahead and enjoy your life, enjoy your body without having to worry about monthly payments. Monthly payments are a drag. But sometimes that's all the options that, you know, that's all the options that are out there for some dolls and that's perfectly fine. Okay, so now I kind of want to get into some like illegitimate ways, some risky ways of paying for surgery. It's all going to depend on, you know, what you feel comfortable with, what you don't feel comfortable with. It's okay. We don't judge on this side of the internet. So, girl, do you, boo, get paid. Doll, doll, get paid. Okay? So, the first thing I want to talk about, a little less risky, is just like starting a crowdfunding account slash asking family and friends for money now <laughs> plastic surgery is seen as an elective surgery some of your friends and family may know exactly how you feel about having plastic surgery and they may want to support you in you know living your best life so you can definitely ask them for money i know when i first launched my book not the same thing at all but when i first launched my first self-help book i started a gofundme and within two to three months i was able to raise five thousand dollars now having surgery and launching a book is two totally different things but i just said to say that there are people that love you and that if they heard your story um if they heard your story they may be open to you know giving you a little cash to see your dreams come true i mean it's worth a shot you know the next thing that is a little bit more risky is starting an only fans slash being becoming a, se a sex worker i want to be very like sensitive to this topic because number one i know that a lot of dolls that i have encountered are sex workers and i definitely respect their hustle so i don't want this I don't want to make this seem like this is just something you can just jump up and do because I do respect the hustle and I know that it's a lot that goes into it and it's not as simple as one, two, three. So that is an option for you um, if that's something that you're into, if that's something you've ever wanted to try. I have seen that it is extremely lucrative. I actually talked to my husband about starting one in order to pay for my surgery. You know, I was like, babe, I, I could just post a toe pic. It ain't even gotta be all of this up here. And you know, we considered it, we prayed about it and everything. <laughs> but that's an option for some of you that, you know, don't mind putting yourself out there, that don't mind investing in that type of side hustle. I heard that the return is great. Um, but you know, it does have its own list of pros and cons. So make sure you weigh those out and you're being wise and responsible with that. The last thing that's kind of risky is finding a sponsor to sponsor your surgery now I wish I had more details on finding a sponsor I tried to have a sugar daddy once in college and he just got way too obsessed so you know I I don't even know where to start when it comes to that type of stuff but I know that there are some websites out there 
where you can post your story about like wanting to have surgery or whatever and there are some men that will sponsor your surgery now what they want in return i don't know but you know it's up to you on if that's something you want to do but just know that, that option is out there girl and when you find out please let me know so i can let the other dolls know how that works okay so i want to quickly give you guys some bonus tips on making some extra cash now of course you know you have instacart i personally did instacart to pay for my post-op massages um and i think i did it from like may to june and i made a little over a thousand dollars doing it i wasn't super consistent with it but it is good money so if that's something that you're able to do and you have the capacity to do that on the side then definitely do it you can have somebody with you while you buy you're not supposed to but you can have somebody with you while you buying the groceries another side hustle that you can do is donating plasma I've never did plasma. I've never donated plasma because I have tattoos and it says something about donating plasma and, ta plasma and tattoos. So I never took advantage of that. That may have changed, but I know that there are some people that donate plaza plasma on the regular in order to get a little extra cash. Now, <laughs> these tips may not be for everybody, but just, they, just know that they're out there. The next thing is selling old clothes. You probably not gonna be able to fit your old clothes after surgery anyways so why not go ahead and start a postmark is that how you say it post poshmark whatever it is start one of those on the website get your pinterest board and sell your old clothes i mean depending on what type of clothes you have designer not designer whatever the case is sales tactic you might make a pretty penny it's the holiday season and people are willing to spend money so let them sell old electronics sell old things that you have around the house that you're not using anymore dust them off wipe them down sanitize them and put them on the market honey and put that money to the side don't go get your nails done don't go do none of that put that money to the side for your surgery okay the next thing is uber eats um so of course you all know about uber eats uber eats is when you pick up food for other people and you just deliver it to their house and instacart is when you shop for groceries if you didn't know what that was so instacart you're shopping for groceries uber eats you're picking up people food and you're delivering them it's in the same way as instacart you can have somebody riding with you in the car i know as a woman it's really hard to just pop up at people's door you might not feel comfortable but you can have somebody with you just to make sure that you're safe okay and then the next thing is driving uber or lyft again it's completely up to your comfort zone i personally drove lyft and uber when i was in college and i do have my stories but for the most part 99 percent of the time i felt safe um but again that's going to be up to you up to you know how much time you actually have and all of that good stuff the last one is turbo uh which is where you can list your car as a rental car and you can make some extra cash doing that i don't have a whole lot of details about that but if that's something that you're interested in maybe you have a luxury car or a car that you're not using you can go ahead and do that if you're not using your car every day and you can make some extra cash that way and you can always start up a low cost side hustle by buying some supplies off of Alibaba and selling that on SD, on Amazon. Of course, those things do cost money. Sometimes you gotta make, you gotta, what is it? You gotta spend money to make money, but those are options for you. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I would definitely <laughs> gave you guys a lot of information, but just know that I'm here for you. If I forgot anything, go ahead and list it down below. I cannot wait to hear what you guys think about this video and I love you all and make sure you stay tuned for the next video.